All right, all right, welcome back. Hello there, I'm Dan Haggerty. Please email me at dan at wral.com. Lots of feedback after our last segment. We talked about the desperate nature of the gun violence problem in this country, and your emails came pouring in, and I got a lot to talk about. Uh, a lot of people asked me about the gunman's age. This was a big focal point. Lori said, it absolutely astounds me that an 18-year-old can't legally buy or drink an alcoholic beverage but can't buy an assault weapon. I hear this argument all the time, and it really sounds great, sounds like a great point, but there is a difference there. Drinking isn't a right. You know, Budweiser isn't in the Constitution, guns are. And that's why we always hear quotes like this, or read them rather, like the one we got from North Carolina Senator Tom Tillis during a committee meeting on preventing tragedies like we saw in Texas, saying, quote, I'm happy to look at anything as long as it doesn't deny anybody rights for law-abiding citizens. We have dozens of Second Amendment sanctuaries in North Carolina. These are those counties that, as stated in this article by commissioners in Lincoln County, would refuse to, quote, enforce any new restrictions on gun ownership. So go ahead, change the age to 21 for assault rifles. These counties aren't listening. I will say I always found this stance on regulations a bit like the Amish with technology. You know, the Amish aren't against tech entirely. They just think the sweet spot's right around the 17th century. For Second Amendment sanctuaries, apparently the sweet spot is right now with gun laws. Because gun control is old. It's as old as this country, older than the Old West. It's one of the reasons for the shootout at the OK Corral. Remember, Wyatt Earp made people disarm at the hotel in Tombstone at the edge of town? I don't think that citing the Second Amendment worked on him. States and smaller municipalities have always had their own rules when it comes to guns, but the federal government first got involved in 1934. Al Capone and mobsters, they were running wild with Tommy guns, and after the St. Valentine's Day massacre in Chicago, a famous mob hit, enough was apparently enough. Congress called it the National Firearms Act. And if you read on the ATF's website, it says, while the NFA was enacted by Congress as an, ex an exercise of its authority to tax, the NFA had an underlying purpose to curtail, if not prohibit, transactions in NFA firearms. So namely sawed off shotguns, machine guns, silencers, explosives, that kind of stuff. It was the biggest regulatory move pertaining to guns in the country's history but it didn't stop gun violence. In fact, it, it got worse. And in 1963, when President Kennedy was shot, apparently enough was enough again. And Congress passed the Gun Control Act in 1968. This was a big one. It moved the age of owning a handgun to 21, prohibited felons from owning guns and the mentally ill. Guns had to have serial numbers after this. It also banned importing guns that have no, quote, no sporting purpose. And it spurred the beginnings of what became the FBI's database for background checks. But gun crimes got even worse. By the late 80s and early 90s, they were the worst this country had ever seen. Also, at that time, around then, we experienced what many people call the first modern mass shooting that happened at a school in 1989 in Stockton, California, when a man opened fire on a playground with an AK-47, killing five and hurting 30 kids. By 1994, Congress and President Clinton passed a 10-year ban on assault weapons, including AR-15s, Tech-9s, and MAC-10s, and that ban expired in 2004. Its effectiveness has always been unclear and long debated. And of course, school shootings didn't stop during that time. Columbine happened in 1999, and one of the weapons that was used was a banned Tech-9. So what am I getting at? Well, for all the people fighting for more regulations, let's have a discussion about how well they actually work, because we are talking about our rights here. And all the people with this unbending interpretation of the Second Amendment, adjusting our gun rules isn't un-American or a threat to the Constitution. They've been happening all along. I don't hear anybody trying to bring back Tommy guns and hand grenades. You see, my job gives me access to some of the top minds studying this topic, which means you have access to those people and their minds. I've been in contact with scholars and data analysts from across the country, and I can get your questions in front of them. So please, email me. Dan at WRAL.com. That's why I'm here. Let me give you a voice. Dan at WRAL.com.